The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. It's an interesting energy, Justin. Yeah, it's weird. I'm yeah. sweet baby brother, 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. I don't know if you all saw the news. I know you all did on the call, but y'all who are listening to the episode. Y'all we're gonna proper. Be, we're going to be uh, writing a book, a comic book, five issues of one. Fun. I prefer funny book. There's yeah, funny uh, different book. classifications. There's comics and graphic novels, and my art is funny books. I like called- to do funny books. I like to do the uh, funny pages, silly paper, silly papers. Mm-hmm. It's called Journey and Mystery. It's part of the what is it? Thor fight series. Mm-hmm. Something about Thor, Thor fight 2019. It- mm. Thor's fighting everyone on this one. And we are, I guess it, I guess the big headline here is we're writing a, a, a funny book. It'll be out in April. But we are also officially co-workers with Wolverine. Yep. Yeah. I'm three cubicles down from Logan. So what's yeah. he like? So I'm in a completely different department from Logan. And my interactions with him oh, are really? all in the kitchen. And they are pretty bad because of all the pranks he does. To me, yeah. I'm kind of his Dwight. Um, he did my stuff in Jello, and he stabbed my dad, you know, three times. <laughs> well, he stabbed my dad once, but it counted as three because he has three knives. But yes. uh, um, how is he like being near him? Is he listening to loud music or? Yeah, eat and here's food? the thing: the motherfucker hums along oh, with the music. Like, man, not not loud, like just under the level of loud enough that you would feel yeah. like comfortable saying something to Gladys, the office manager. Yeah, like you say it, and Gladys is like, "It's not that loud," but it's loud enough. That like I can't not hear it. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi guys. Uh, it's me, the manager, Justin. Hi, Justin. Hi, Justin. Uh, I couldn't help but overhear you all talking about Logan. Yes. And uh, I'm not sure that you're really producing the healthiest work environment uh, with these kinds of comments. Well, Justin, just real quick, I did. I left a note on your desk like for. HR about the dad stabbing incident. So I, I feel like it's weird that you're coming to me first. Before, I yeah. don't want to step on Griffin's toes, but I feel like the humming thing is like as bad as the dad stabbing thing. Well, it like, might it, 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 multiply mine by three because again, three knives in this guy's hand. Yeah, but he hums every day, Griffin. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Well, that's a fair point. Listen, guys, um, why don't you take a seat and we'll get this all sorted out? Oh, boy. Oh, see, I wasn't looking for a conversation. That was the chair but, scooting back. That's me sitting down in it. Uh, Berkey, could you get, Berkey, can you get Logan down here? Oh, goodness. Oh. Berkey, get Logan down here and ask him I mean, to- I don't want to confront him. He's a no, superhero. Stay completely I'm silent. Afraid he's going to get mad. Okay, here he comes. Okay. He's going to stay completely silent though, Trav, so don't worry That's about it. He won't yell at me. Oh, he's wearing flip-flops again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Logan, if you could just sit right there, you remember, um- Travis and Griffin. Hey, oh, Logan. I'll hey, Logan. Back. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, Logan. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry. I'm so, can he, do you mind? Can... can he put the knives in his hand? Like when yes. we're t- doing this, I feel I like. I feel like it's a little threatening. Just like I don't know how you. I know you snicked him out. I don't know what sound it makes when they go back in. Like just, just. Oh, slurp, see, when you weren't looking, him. he had just one of them out, like the middle finger. He did. He did. See, it, and did that, away, and Justin, that's what we're talking about. That's the kind of shit we're guys, talking about. Logan, guys, slurp Logan. your knife back up into your hand and let's talk about this like adults. Logan, put him away. Thank you, <laughs> Logan. I said, put him away, Logan. 
Well, thank that, you. Uh, see, I thank can't you. deal with this. How am I supposed to do Marvel's accounting work and write a comic book while Logan's doing this? Logan, this is uncomfortable. This is. You, let me back up. You've given a lot of great work to this company. Uh, we love the blue and orange uh, and yellow suit. Uh, we were wild about the orange and brown one. And then uh, one day you just refused to wear costumes at all. And you just yeah, started wearing went, like, jacket. tank top and jeans, which I, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't jump in. I was a fan. Thank you. Uh, we were all trying to let that slide, Logan. But at this point, we... Hey, guys, do we have to be careful about what we say about a lot of things now? This is just now occurring to me as I'm trying to inhabit this great character. No, comedy is all about just being, uh, you know, offens- offensive and being an offensive rude boy. And so, like, I, I think we can say whatever we want. Uh, devil, may- devil may care. Yeah, I think Justin Frankenstein teen become the monster. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool sucks. There. Yeah, oh, no, it. we can't say Take that. Take that, Marvel. I don't think you should say that. No, I enjoyed those Deadpool movies actually rules. quite a bit. I just watched, actually, I just watched um, the second half of the second one. <laughs> this is being a father. Yeah. I watched the first half of the second one two months ago and thought I should circle back around the second half of the second one. Hey, can we get back into the bit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold on. I had to go. Okay. 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 Uh, Logan, I just wanted to say that, like, you may think you're hot shit with your n- knife hands, but I just want to say we are we are the ones writing this particular comic and i don't think you are necessarily in it but we could put you in it and then i could like for instance i could write a scene where um magneto gets up close to you and farts so bad and you smell it and die like an idiot yeah you know what we don't even need to write you into it we can just have a character say like logan told me the other day he likes to eat poop that he finds and yeah we get just spider-man's like it's too bad about wolverine and then somebody else like what's wrong and spider-man's like magneto fart in his face he smelled it so bad he died like an idiot Mm -hmm. i and like maybe like kate bishop is like i heard that logan went down a water slide so fast that his underpants ripped off (laughs) And like he was really embarrassed. Yeah. And no one will sell him underpants. And now no one will sell him underpants. <laughs> so he's naked all the time. Yeah, and he smells like Magneto's fart because it lingers in all of his yeah, chest and his hair. sideburns and stuff. <laughs> would you like? Hey, you, would you like that, Wolverine? You wouldn't like that, would you? I don't care, dude. I've got no more dads to stab, bud. <laughs> <laughs> you stabbed all the dads. Wait, it's my dad too. Hold on, this is just occurring to me, Logan. Yeah, we can make him have a uh, like a tattoo that says "Lemon Diet Coke." Yeah, uh-huh. forever. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, on this topic, could yeah. I could I like solve the you know the 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 big fight that we're writing with like me, Griffin coming <laughs> in and stopping it, and then like I get to be in the movies. This is my favorite thing that people who like write get their own comic series, like TV shows or whatever. They make a character and like they establish like that character is low key, not low key, low key, the strongest character in like the the comics universe. Sure. So if you did that, it's like you just introduced Griffin and yeah. he's invincible and two times stronger than the Hulk. And yeah. like he, he shoots webs, but better than Spider Man. Yeah. We don't have we don't have Peter Parker in ours, but like the the this sort of example will work better if we do. What if we like had a scene where Spider Man took off his mask and it was Peter Parker, and then everybody's like gasp, and he's like, "Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet," and he pulls it off, and it's me, and it's actually oh, shit. been me the entire time yeah. since like the. 20s? I don't know. Yeah, you know what I like? Yeah. What would be better is then he tears off his suit and it's the Hulk's body. Uh huh. <laughs> but Justin's head and face. <laughs> See, I don't need that much. I'm happy if like Thor comes back to like, I don't know, finish his, his big fight or whatever. Mm. And where's he been? Well, he's been with me and I've been coaching him. I'm Thor's life coach. I see. And without mm. me, and he says this numerous times, without Travis, I am nothing. Well, so and like, then, I'm not the most powerful, but like yeah. the most powerful needs me. And I'll, could- just, I'll just write in that Thor finds his estranged father, Thor Sr., and that's me. Whoa. And then he uh, unstabs our dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
if we have time, we'll find room to work in the undad stabbing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we could have Spider Man say, you know, a great man once told me, with great power comes great responsibility. And then someone else says, oh, yeah, your Uncle Ben. And then Peter Parker says, no. The only thing my Uncle Ben ever told me is, hey, shut up, wheel is on. <laughs> and enjoy this rice. The, and enjoy the <laughs> And the Yankees have no hitting this year. Those are the two things my Uncle Ben ever said to me. No, my best friend Justin McElroy, a grown adult, said those things to me, and it really inspired me and changed my life. I'll never forget when Justin was gunned down by those gangsters while saving all of those orphans and puppies. And his dying and his dying breath, he said, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and, and don't do Spider-Man 2. And then, and, then, he got, and then he got one more thing in before he died, and it was Wolverine, smell Magneto, <laughs> farting so bad it died like an And idiot. then, later, when no one expected it, he came back. <laughs> <laughs> he was the greatest hero of them all, Superman yeah. Two. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> Superman squared. And Superman back. times Hulk. So Superman let's... plus Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Justin McRoy this entire time has been Superman on Hulk shoulders. Go <laughs> so, get him, son. With the Iron Man suit on. Sorry about your luck, Hitler. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's from the forties. I love that vibe. That's yeah, also sure. that's also Super Justice catchphrase. He says that all the time, even when not fighting Hitler. It's yeah. just so popular that one time he fought Hitler, he can't stop saying it. We are do we send this part to a lawyer like the first thirteen minutes to a lawyer just to protect just, like have the lawyer just to have a lawyer look at it and check our check our work. Just kind of make sure it's all clear. Anyway, it's called Journey to Mystery, it comes out April tenth, and it's gonna be like five issues. So a bunch of people said you should have waited 10 days, and it's like, yeah, those are the decisions we get to make. <laughs> the day yeah. it comes out. <laughs> we called up the Marvel president people, and we're like, it, do you guys know about w- weed? <laughs> you guys know <laughs> weed, <laughs> right? You all know about weed, hey, right? Ask Mickey about weed. Um, okay, so anyway, this is a podcast. It's an advice show or something. Uh, uh, we, we say that. Um, it's uh, so much more. It's really more of a family at this point. And families. Sometimes it's so much less, though. <laughs> Some families podcast. We're getting yeah. to the point where it's finally feeling like family, folks. <laughs> so, I was cleaning out my closet over the holiday season, and I found this unwrapped present hiding in a back corner. It's a Christmas present, still wrapped, from four years ago that my now roommate gave to me to give to one of our other friends. I obviously never did that. So, what do I do? If I open it and keep it, my roommate will know I never gave it to the person I was supposed to. Should I just keep it in my closet forever? That's from Poor Present Transporter in California. I'm going to assume then that that's a misprint in the beginning where you say you found an unwrapped present and then say it was still wrapped. You probably meant you found a wrapped an present. An un, un, un unwrapped. Ah, uh, well, okay. Everything's just an unwrapped present <laughs> if you yeah. think about it. Mm. Um, you shoe, except, unwrapped except, present. Actually, actually, this poem, unwrapped ex- present. Except for explicitly wrapped presents mm-hmm. are not them. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, this is a bad ruse you've got going because mm. there's a there's a there's a huge sort of failure point here in it, and it's that the roommate will at some point have uh, the roommate could ostensibly find out that the person they meant to give the present to never received it. And and yeah, whether that's, they go to their house and it's like, mm, where's the punch bowl, punch bowl, punch bowl, looking for the punch bowl. Where's the punch bowl. And it's not there. Or they explicitly just like say, Hey, um, do you ever use that punch bowl? I got you. Then like the jig is up and then they're going to assume that like you stole it, pawned it. Um, hey, um, did you, uh, I've, I've been mean to ask you, did you like that ferret I bought you? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It's you got to you got to fess up I feel like. I know that our Ooh. position on these matters is usually very like you know zag on them 2015 lie and s- steal and be bad. But listen, it's 2019 and it's time for you to become the monster. Mm. By which I mean confront your fear of how bad this is going to be yeah. when you do own up to not uh delivering on this Christmas cheer cuz I'm not going to lie to you. You fucked up pretty bad. Yeah, but what if, okay, this is different from advice we've ever given, but what if you just walked up to the other friend, the one that is supposed to get the present, and you say, hey, I fucked up real bad. My roommate, our friend, gave me this present to give to you, and I completely forgot about it. It's Uh, been four years. uh, Yes, I fucked up, but here you go. And, and, 
please don't tell them. And never to. You can't ever I, tell anyone. I don't agree. If I'm looking at the if I'm looking at a chart right now, people who are angry, none. <laughs> right? If you give them the gift, that person's angry instantly. There's one person angry. If they tell your other friends, that's two people angry. And you're not feeling so hot yourself. It seems like everyone is more upset now that you have given this present away. Other thing is, put it in the closet uh -huh. and forget about it. And then if your friend is like, oh, man, come on. <laughs> the oh. present. You could be like, oh, shit. Hold on. Let me fix it. And then they're kind of mad, but you have plausible deniability. It seems to me that if you suddenly just decide to deliver it, it seems very intentional. I feel like that would make me much more frustrated mm. than mm. just Wait. letting them like. <clears throat> we both have stuff. Go okay, Travis. Griffin, okay, put it in your now roommate's closet when they're not home. Oh. Like under whoa. a t-shirt or something. And then your roommate will be like, hey, what's this? And you're like, I don't know, what? So listen, I'm giving you two options. One, complete honesty. Two, the deepest lie. You never gave it to me. Put you it in, fucked up. Put it in the recipient's bed while they're sleeping. Okay. And then they wake up. What I will say is what's gonna really take the edge off this. Don't do it right now, holy shit, this close to the holidays. No way. In May? In in fucking August, when the you know you want you want a big fun holiday to get your just get psyched out of your mind, but there's not a whole lot there for you, and then you get a a Christmas present. It doesn't matter how old it is. It doesn't matter, uh, you know how how dusty how many cobwebs it's it's developed on its on its hide. That's exciting. Christmas in August, and Think then you it. give it to him and you say, "This is from me." Oh, okay. I don't like that. You don't know what it is, though. <laughs> oh, wait, that's a good call. It might be <laughs> shitty. Could be a framed picture of this person and their roommate. <laughs> this is for me, a picture of you and my roommate. <laughs> uh, how about a Yahoo? Sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, here's one from Elliot. Uh, thank you, Elliot. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call. Uh, Muscly James. Uh, there's an ad. There's a man running on a treadmill. He's huge. Uh, Muscly James asks... What is a polite way to pocket pick? Hmm. These days, hmm. when you hear about thefts, there is it's usually not cute. The, I feel like the era of the of the gentleman thief or gentle person thief is 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 well over. Is there anything that we can get going again by making a by doing a polite pocket pick? Here's what you do. You wait at an airport in like, uh, like uh, say, uh, I don't know, uh, Montreal, right? For a plane that just got there from America. You pick their pocket and take their American money, but what's that? You slip some Canadian bills in there. I see, yes. So you have picked their pocket, but also they don't have to hit up the currency exchange. Now, but maybe the Travis McElroy gentleman thief exchange rate is gonna be a little bit different. Well, yes, absolutely, but... I would pay a little bit extra to be saved having to interact with another human being while doing a, a, a exchange that I have no idea how it works. That's my nightmare. What? What is it? What, there's something that you can leave in there. There's something you can leave in there that will not only take the edge off, you will feel like you have come out on top of the equation. And, I, and, and I'm having trouble. It's not candy. I feel like candy would be good for a second. Then you'd be like, well, I can't go to bars because I don't have my shit anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, with mm. <clears throat> hmm. a better wallet. Now, juice. Yep. Does it there? The, does it have money and stuff and better, cards in there? A better life. A better life. A oh. new life. And they a can better life. Okay. Are you switching wallet? Is it the gentleman thief's switches your wallet with a okay. different wallet that contains within its folds a better life, a way forward for you? And Janine and the girls, <laughs> a new chance at the uh -huh. life you always swore you'd have. <laughs> but credit yeah. cards, yeah, okay. sure, driver's sure, license, sure. an acceptance letter to that prep school that you try <laughs> to get the girls into for so long and never could quite pull it off. It's a new start. Janine, it's what we waited for. We have to take this chance. It's a miracle. 
It's like the address on the driver's license, like your new house. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's a new start. There's pictures of well-trained dogs in your wallet. <laughs> Daryl, we can't just... Daryl's dead. My name is Victor. Victor New Chance. <laughs> it says right here on my new wallet. My name is Victor New Chance, and your name is still Janine. I guess you <laughs> there's no there's no driver's license for you. There's no driver's license for you. Maybe I'm supposed to go by myself, Janine, but I'm taking you and the <laughs> girls with me. Let's be conspicuous. I hope nobody switches Janine's <laughs> wallet. She's got a lot of money <laughs> and nothing going on really. No, no big no opportunities on her horizon. Closed doors. For Janine. Mm. Big, open, butt pockets. <laughs> <laughs> where the wa- where the wallet lives. Um, that could be really good, Justin. Just a new start. Or maybe a little puzzle. <laughs> maybe sort a puzzle. A skill testing puzzle. Yeah. Like one of those where it's like you try to get the little like metal beads into the holes, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, any kind of puzzle, really, Trev. Like a word search? Sure, man. Any puzzle that you could think of is probably equally funny, I would guess. A crossword, a Sudoku. Man, you know, a lot of puzzles. I'll gotta give it up. You could say if you solve the puzzle, you're going to get your wallet back. I'm watching. And they stay there and they spend a couple hours working on the puzzle. By the time they solve it, <laughs> We're sitting on a beach earning 20%. But then Ooh. when they solve it, we do have to give their wallet back. Now, Trav, did you not fucking hear what I said? But you said that if they solved it, you would give their wallet back. But I can't, Trav, because unless they're on the beach earning 20% with me. Well, you would go back to where they are. But the 20% needs me there at the beach. But then why tell them, Griffin, why tell them to solve the puzzle then if you're not going to give it back? Because it seems like a waste of time. What about a lotto ticket? Ooh. Now, if you do that a million times. <laughs> Somebody is going to be helped by that. Somebody's going to be helped by that. And then karmically, like, you're, I think you still but come out on top. Can you imagine if it happened the first time, Griffin? Oh, Like, beans. the first wallet you steal, you put, oh. Oh, it won $38 million or whatever. That like, is a barrel of beans. You're not going to keep pickpocketing after that. Oh, shoot. I'd be so freaking PO'd. Your fire's gone out. You don't want to pick any pockets. Do people still pick pockets? When a criminal wants something from you, I feel like they usually go through a less savory. I, I was convinced growing up that anywhere where there were more than three people, you are 95% likely to get pickpocketed. Interesting. And so I think maybe what happened is the wallet chain made the pi- the gentleman pickpocket go extinct. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, oh, it's attached to him. I saw a lot of wallet chains in the late 90s, early aughts, and I never saw one of them prevent a theft, and damn it, I really wish I had, because that would have been so funny. (laughs) I did see them facilitate a lot of skateboard accidents. Let's say, because I'll tell you this, if I pull a wallet out of Jinko jeans, which were made to be stolen from, what Uh with with their jumbo. They're like some sort of carnival game. (laughs) I could, a carnival game for kids, you know? Like, this is the kids' version of skee ball. I could steal a wallet from one butt pocket while dunking a tennis ball <laughs> full force into the other one. They would be none the wiser. Um, but then I would get they would have the wallet chain. I bet you dollars to donuts. If it was me, and I was at the mall, and I got this wallet, and I pulled it, and then had the initial snapback of hitting that, that, that chain tension, and then they, the skater looks back at me, I bet you... I could pull that wallet hard enough to either rip the pants <laughs> or break the chain. I could either rip the pants or break the chain. And now you're in a real pickle because yeah. one, your pants are torn and messed up and they're falling down and everybody's laughing at you, Wolverine. Or two, I have now a weapon on a chain that I can use against you. I have a wallet flail. Uh, how about another question? Yes. Would that be okay? I tend to sneeze rather loudly. I'm not doing it on purpose or anything. Uh huh. <laughs> it's just how I've always sneezed. A few days ago at work, I noticed a coworker of mine gave me a dirty look after I sneeze. I figured I was just imagining things until about an hour later when I noticed her glance over my direction and then sneezed so loudly she was nearly screaming. <laughs> Should I just shrug it off? Nearly it's like, it's screaming, huh? Or does this mean. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's from at you at Appalachia. Hey, listen, it's me, Justin. I've got a lot of human foibles and faults. This is coming from a place of 100% humility. My heart is open to you. You should sneeze quieter. <laughs> just, you just should sneeze a little quieter. And I don't think you consciously make the choice every time you sneeze to sneeze very loudly. But I think you made a, you did make it one time when you were seven, mm. and you said, "Fuck it, <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. I'm gonna blow the doors off these motherfuckers. Here it go!" And then you blew it up, and then years and years and years and years later, you don't remember it as being a conscious choice. But my thing for you would just be one thing to work on in 2019 would just be to sneeze quieter mm. or or at least like carry a thick flannel handkerchief that you might muffle said sneeze Man. was that it did you did you sleeve it did you cover that well, oh sure. you gotta cover yeah, that you got a vampire because if you s sneeze that loudly oh shit become the monster folks if you gotta sneeze vampire yes yeah, I got a vampire it's not bad it, there are people who are like why did you pick a bad thing and say people do bad stuff we're not sleeve no. it sneeze it it can mean so many things if you take it to mean that you should do bad things then you are already a, a bad monster I like Wolverine let me say this you're looking at that and you're like mm, do I need another cookie hey Become the monster. You become the monster. Cookie Go monster. For okay. yes, yes, for sure. Okay, anyway, we're getting so far away from I this. guys, I get, uh, what the angriest, probably the angriest I've ever been in my entire life is being in a room of people working and somebody does one of those screams, uh, there's one of those sneezes where they scream in the first part, you know what I mean? The, like, as the, ah, chew! The, the, ah, chew! Like, and then they look, at, they give that look like, oh shucks, that's just the way I sneeze. <laughs> it's fucking not. Just sneeze quieter, please, yeah. for the rest of us. Just sneeze quieter. Your vocal cords are still putting that stank on it. You're yeah, this not is coming. This is coming from Justin, who used to do like a drum roll. Before right, I used to do a drill. We all great. get our attention that. in different ways. He, he did. He would go like. <laughs> it was That's amazing. not a joke. He would really do it. Uh, he sounded like Yoshi doing a butt stomp. I was great. <laughs> Amazing, but I'm saying it was just a way to get attention. We all do these things in school, and then we grow and we move past them. You have to stop sneezing so loudly. You're bothering everyone. Please think about it. Just sneeze quieter. You can do it. I believe in you. You don't need to get in a sneeze fight with this person. This is don't a professional a environment. Fight. But can I say something that does bother me? Mm. If this person follows my sage advice and they start seizing quiet, quieter, then like his coworker, let's call, uh, let's call that person Shimmy. Okay. So when Shimmy notices the next time you sneeze and it's quieter, Shimmy's gonna think that she's cowed you. One. Yeah, she's one through, I would say, some very shameful play. Mm -hmm. Oh, then might I okay. suggest. Okay, well, now wait, Tra now Travis, you started talking very quickly, uh -huh. and sometimes when that happens, the, I, the sounds are funny, but the ideas are bad or challenging. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And I want to well, make. I think. Wow. No, so, no fear okay. Here. You won't even let me get through the sentence when I tell you to think about the ideas. These must be extremely challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it's hold, just that hold on. My, Wait, hold my, on. My me, mind moves so quickly, Justin. Let me open a fresca. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on, let me get comfortable because I've tried to help you twice preemptively. There will be no postemptive help for I gotcha. what you're about to do. Okay. You're going to start sneezing quieter, but prouder. So when huh. you feel a sneeze coming on, stand up, maybe put your foot up on the chair and like spread your arms like you're about to deliver like an operatic solo. <laughs> like Scott Stapp. <laughs> yeah, sneeze politely, bow, I I sit back help. down. That's good. Uh, you could also just like sneeze quieter and then Shimmy will sneeze louder and then come over and be like, looks like my sneeze was louder. And then you gesture all over your desk and you say, yes, but mine was wetter. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Mine was so wet. So uh, you can keep your decibels. <laughs> let's uh, let's take a brief sojourn 
at this point in the program and uh, go peruse the wares over at the Money Dump. Welcome, stranger. Okay. Welcome, Thanks stranger, to the Money Zone. I'm very excited this week to tell you about Ring. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer with smart video doorbells and cameras that protect millions of people everywhere. What does that mean, you ask? Well, you connect it to your phone wherever you are. There's a camera on the Ring doorbell. It senses motion, or people can, like, you know, push the button, pause up on your phone. You look at it, see who's there, takes videos. If you're worried about, like, people stealing your packages and stuff, which I always am, then this video doorbell is for you. Or if you just want to see who's at the door before you, like, get up and go open it, you need Ring. Um, and so, as a listener, you have a special offer on a Ring starter kit available right now with a Ring doorbell and motion-activated floodlight camera. The starter kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. Just go to ring.com slash mybrother. That's ring.com slash mybrother. Did y'all see a video a guy made a box and it shot glitter everywhere and did a fart spray when people stole it? No, I mean, that's I, good yeah. though. I guess. That's how, fine. How come I didn't know that there was fart spray until that video? How did I not know that, that we have successfully synthesized it? I don't know. I guess they're just not on the blogs. There's no cure for canker sores, but we still uh, we made fart spray. Good work, science. Hey, here's one for Quip. I brushed my teeth with it today. These are toothbrushes that are battery powered and, and used by Griffin. Used Each by one. They shake and shimmy in your mouth. They do a little clean, a cleaning dance, and you put it in there for two minutes, and it has these sonic vibrations, and then it just gets those guys pearly white again, and uh, it's wonderful. I'd like to travel with it because I have a little thing, and it's like a cover for it, but then you can turn it upside down and stick it on your mirror, and then like it's a little holster for it, like it's a cool cowboy gun. So if you want to get Quip and have a cool toothbrush gun, I want you to go to getquip.com slash my brother right now. And also when you do that, you get your first refill pack of toothbrush heads for free. They've got over 1 million happy, healthy mouths. So get your mouth happy and healthy too. Uh, the toothbrushes start at just 25 bucks uh, and you get your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash my brother. Genre film fans, hear me. I know you're out there. Do not be ashamed of your love for gore, action, sci-fi, or fantasy. It's time to come out of the shadows. Because on Switchblade Sisters, we celebrate our love for genre films. I'm film critic April Wolf. Each week I have a conversation with a different female filmmaker about their fave genre film, and we cover film craft, getting projects off the ground, working with actors, and our general love for genre movies. I've had so many great guests, like Heather Graham. In the past, it's like so many films are made by men that the female point of view is not always respected, which is why all these stories haven't come out till now. Jennifer's body director, Karin Kusama. I think there's a lot more fantasy and a lot more expectation projected onto a woman director. Comedian and actor, Kate Berlin. I mean, it sounds so cheesy to talk about it in yourself, like, you just keep going, you you know, I'm just a vessel, like, I I just do it, you know, I don't think, but, like, that is what it is. And many others. So check out Switchblade Sisters every Thursday on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh! Ring, ring it in, ring it in. <laughs> I want a munch. I want to munch. It's getting more operatic. That was very like a like like a medieval, you know, dark ages fifing. I enjoyed it. I have two this week, and so I'm gonna do them as a combo because they're both. Less substantial. Either one would have been a good Munch Squad Junior. But uh, I'm going to do one. That Is that the conversion rate? Two Munch Squad Juniors yeah, equals yeah. one Munch Squad Senior? This okay. one kind of bums me out. But I'm going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> oh, no. Tim Tebow teams with Core Life Eatery for Food Revolution. Oh, no. All Welcome right. to Tim Tebow's Food Revolution. The first paragraph of this fast food press release says, what if you could change your life in just 21 days? Professional athlete Tim Tebow is teaming up with Core Life Eatery, an active lifestyle restaurant 
offering a variety of greens, grains, and broth-based dishes to do exactly that. Tebow is taking the Core Life Challenge, and it wants you to join him. So that this is a... The Core Life Challenge is a 21-day food revolution. All of these days, I'm assuming you will eat a Core Life eatery, I have to imagine. <laughs> That's a brand built around clean eating, which doesn't mean anything. And Wait, promoting it's, all- it's a 21-day challenge where you have to eat at the same restaurant every day? Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what a great challenge. If that's the case, that I did. I unconsciously did the Wendy's challenge in college <laughs> a lot. So it's, uh, it, they're, it's promoting overall wellness. It encourages you to take control of your health. Although I would argue if you're eating at the same restaurant every day, you're letting Tim Tebow take care of your health. <laughs> Tebow, hey, it's me, wheel. Tim. <laughs> Coraline. Hey, Tim Tebow. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm worried about you. I'm stopping you at the door with my football body. Core Life Eatery and co founder Todd Mansfield, who spent dec- decades practicing physical therapy and functional medicine, which means lying, is, <laughs> is trained in nutrition, designed the challenge to provide simple guidelines to improve health and also presumably tricks to get people to eat at the same place for 21 days <laughs> in a row. During these 21 days, you'll get recharged, refueled, not refunded though, uh, and embark <laughs> on your personal journey. Journey turns living a healthier lifestyle and living in fucking soylent green, becoming the healthiest version of yourself. The challenge begins on Wednesday, January 16th, and you're going to get uh, daily emails with helpful tips and special offers to help you stay motivated and on track from Tim Tebow, I guess. <laughs> hey, it's Tim. Are you um, going to come into the restaurant today? We're all missing you. Didn't this- see you there yesterday, and I'm worried you might be dead because you're not eating healthy. Uh, here's uh, a quote from Tim Tebow, footballer. For our best performance, we need the very best food, says Tim Tebow, who's credited here as a core life eatery enthusiast. His oh parents must be so proud. Congratulations, Tim. Core life eatery provides the top quality fuel your body needs to detox, refuel, and begin 2019 with by getting on the path toward being a healthier you. Detoxing, of course, can be performed with, by anyone with a kidney or liver. You don't need Tim Tebow to make you chicken to get it. <laughs> you don't need to eat Tim Tebow's special chicken every day to get detoxed. Anyway, can, can the but three does of it us help if, if Tim Tebow massages your liver and kidney? Does that help? Can the three of us get uh, Cleveland Browns full back refrigerator Perry uh, to do a challenge for us? Uh, and it's just like eat wherever the fuck you want. And don't eat at Tebow's place. Don't, don't go to Tebow's place. Tebow's don't place. go to Tebow's wait place for three calendar weeks. <laughs> it's me, Refrigerator Perry. <laughs> just go to fucking Taco Bell or whatever. I want to meet the person who is like, oh man, I've got to get my life on track in 2019. I know. I'm gonna let Tim Tebow make all of my meals. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so here's an, here's some more news. D- fuck it. Don't let Tim Tebow lie to you and overcharge you for lettuce. Baskin Robbins adds new brownie inspired flavors to the menu. Oh, Boy, no. that is one pretty challenging inspired. I have to say <laughs> brownie inspired flavors to the menu. It's like a, it has a spirit of a brownie without any of the actual contents. Baskin Robbins is ringing in 2019 with a brownie lover's dream come true. Brownies. <laughs> brownies. <laughs> hey, dipshits, we finally figured it out. We can just sell brownies. Cool, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> the January flavor of the month, brownie bar mashup, is a delicious combination of traditional chocolate and blonde brownies. It delivers on two delicious brownie flavors in one bite. Ice cream fans may also find themselves under a sweet spell this month as, <laughs> as Love Potion number 31 returns to Baskin Robbins. This combination. As new of- flavor mm-hmm. MK Ultra hits the stores. <laughs> <coughs> this combination of white chocolate flavored ice cream, Agent Orange, and raspberry flavored ice cream with chocolate flavored <laughs> chips 
God, I'm gonna fucking lose my. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a combination of white chocolate flavored ice cream and raspberry flavored ice cream and chocolate flavored chips and raspberry filled chocolate flavor hearts and raspberry swirl. <laughs> And it's sure to work its magic on every guest, as it has already worked its hypno- hypnotic linguistic magic on me. Here's a quote <laughs> from Carol Austin. Carol, hey, it's Justin McElroy, a local <laughs> reporter for Munch Squad. It's January, right? We're all eating at Timo's place to get fit. How are you justifying continuing to operate this month? Should you not shudder? Who is who is who would pledge to eat more ice cream in this month of new beginnings and fresh starts? Well, S- S- Carol, uh, dart, her eyes dart back and forth across the room nervously before she hesitantly answers, uh, 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 sweat beating on her upper lip. Uh, uh, well, Justin, our mission is to help guests flavor every moment. Okay, Carol, let me stop you there. <laughs> that means nothing. But go, okay, it doesn't go, I'm mean sorry, anything. Weird. Go on. Uh, our mission is to help guests flavor every moment, and January's offerings are here to do just that. Whether your resolution is to a silence <laughs> fills the room, <laughs> people wait expectantly as Carol Austin, vice president of marketing, tries to sell ice cream in January. Uh, whether your resolution is to um, reconnect with old friends. Or Holy shit. enjoy more family time. Baskin Robbins has something to help everyone hit pause and savor the start of 2019. Carol, it's, it's a good try, Carol. Yeah, it's good. It sounds like good ice cream. It sounds like confusing ice cream. Hey, um, gang, two things real quick. One, William the Refrigerator Perry paid, played for the uh, the Bears, not the Browns. I just wanted to say I just want to apologize to my dad for getting a football fact wrong on our podcast. And the other thing is uh, that... Hey, Griffin, hold on. Sorry, my neck cut out for a second. Um, before we get back to the show, I did want to mention, you know, I think you said William Refrigerator Perry played for the Browns. Ah, oh, shoot. The, no, the you're going to get dad points. Yeah. Hey, sorry, I stepped away for a second to go get a glass of water. I did want to say real quick, Griffin, uh, it was the Bears, not the Browns, that Refrigerator Perry oh, played for. Oh, shit. Hey, guys, you're... sorry, I stepped away to get a screwdriver for some shelves I'm installing. Um, oh, early, damn it. Earlier, you mentioned about William Refrigerator Perry... My dad points. They're fl- they're they're s- flying through my fingers. Hey guys, sorry. I just traveled back forward in time from the past where I just watched William Refrigerator Perry play for the Bears. What are you guys talking about? Nah, shoot. Hey guys, I've become unstuck in time, and I think I just sired William Refrigerator Perry. <laughs> Wild. Mm-hmm. And he had a he had a birthmark shaped like a bear. If okay, that means anything. Second thing. Everybody, please, Christ, go to CoralLifeEatery.com and scroll down to the bottom of the page where you will find a picture of Tim Tebow whose face is making a face as if you have just told him that everybody else ate all the Core Life Eatery we got delivered and there's none left for him. And it's a, he's making this incredulous face that is so incredible. It's so incredible that this is what they went with. What? Wait, what do you mean you ate all the Core Life Eatery? What about all my orange drinks? Drinks. Oh. <laughs> what about my orange drinks and vegetable bowls? But I drove all the way here. I, I should have called first. The tagline that they've gone for with this challenge, by the way, is it says this like four times on the website. It only takes 21 days to change your life. Um, Hi, that's not inspiring at all. I've never done anything for 21 days, <laughs> ever. And my life is a way. I mean, it is the way that it is. Yeah. I, I don't even go to places I want to go to three weeks in a row, Core I'm, Life Eatery. I'm going to take this challenge and see what Tim says about the fact that I'd have to drive 500 miles to get to a <laughs> Core Life Eatery. <laughs> Sorry, Can everybody who doesn't live in a major metropolitan area. Your life stays the fucking same. <laughs> Should I just uh, go outside and chew leaves like a cow? Like Tim? Like Tim would do? Hey, I've got a Yahoo. <laughs> I just love the picture. Ah, oh, Tim. It's real good. Uh, this one was sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thank you, Graham. It's Yahoo Answers user Melanie, who asks, I forgot when my job interview is? <gasps> How do I go about asking when my interview was without appearing irresponsible? This is so choice. Oh, no. That's rough. I'm trying to think of a wording. Hi, this is, I'm calling. Can't lie. 
Nope. Can't lie, they won't tell you. Ooh, this is a delectable little confection. Yeah, it's a riddle me this. Mm. <laughs> riddle me piss, boys. No, I did it first. But you didn't say piss. Oh, it's because it's New Year and I'm trying not to cuss as much. Could you pretend to be a competing job? Nope. Mm. Compete now hold on. I do want to hear what Travis <laughs> thinks competing job is. I'm going to hire Henriette. Nope. Okay. And so I'll interview her when you were going to. Oh. When was that? That's nothing. No, no. that's good. No, that's Fuck. quite good. Um the no, name was right. Mel the name was Melanie. It's good. It's good. The idea of poaching a job interview. What about you call and say, I can't wait to start work. Let's move that interview up. The mm. sooner the better. <laughs> you say when the inter- I choose the interview time. What are you doing right now? And then you knock on the door. I know my interview was supposed to happen at a later time, but I'm so horny for it. I mean, excited for it. S- shit, sorry. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, no, sorry. That I want to do it right now, please. Your interview was two months ago. <laughs> You've been working here for two months. Yeah, whatever mm. you're going to do, do it fast. Uh, why don't you call the boss, okay? Uh-huh. And um, the uh, you say, hi, this is Shellick from- Melanie. Oh, you're li- it's a no, lie name. It's sorry, a sorry, lie. it's a lie name. Yeah, go for it, go, go. Okay. You didn't put on your lie voice. So yeah, so I thought it was- Oh, Melanie. okay, sorry, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, so you say, hi, this is Shellick from oh, Human Relations, and- uh, I was gonna get an edible arrangements for everybody that has a job interview this month, and could you just list them off to me with the times, so I can get it, get them one personalized, mm-hmm. and have it ready for their interview time. Now, I want to say, Justin, that the <laughs> the uh, department human relations does make it sound like Shellac works in the sex department. Some sort department. of sex acts. Um, well, you could just <laughs> say you sound, work at- they're, they're, they're aliens. Okay. Oh, okay. Possibly. You, you could just say you work at Edible Arrangements and say you want to give free deliveries to everybody who has a job interview today because damn it, Edible Arrangements <laughs> loves jobs. <laughs> We're just so excited that the economy is is thriving, maybe. And our shit is really just some apples we dipped in chocolate, <laughs> so there's very little overhead. Ask them, say, we would like to offer our facility for you to do your job interviews in today. <laughs> you know what? We interviewed Melanie for you. She's <laughs> great. Uh, you hey, call. it's me. It's me from the bakery, Bakery Joe. I got a cake here that says, uh, happy job interview, Melanie. So when do you want this dropped off? I like that. That could work, too. Uh, uh, how about this? Check this one out. Hello, Richard. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. This is Dr. frito I heard you had an interview with Melanie coming up, and I say just hire her. She's the tops. Anyway, gotta go. Crunch. <laughs> now that's assuming, I guess, that she's interviewing for Frito Lay. Uh, yes, right. That oh, right. Okay. You could fit. You could fit in whatever you wanted to there. Mm. You could just roll up to like the waiting area in front of the office and just start sitting there now and just say like, uh, punctuality is uh, really important to me, so uh, I want to be here right, right when you need me for the interview. And they'll be like, it's in nineteen days, and you say. Well, good thing I brought all this soup. And then you, <laughs> <laughs> you show them all the soup that you brought. Um, exactly 19 cans. One a day. That's all you need, folks. Hi, it's me, Tim Tebow. And I'm here to tell you how to flip your shit all around. <laughs> it's your 19-day soup challenge. Don't eat more than one can of soup a day. <laughs> Things are loaded with salt. Not so- Tim Tebow's soup. His is made out of football sweat. <laughs> so today I went to Ga- New York City. I almost said Gatorade because you said football sweat. <laughs> today I went to New York City with my girlfriend and we decided to take a short taxi drive rather than take the subway. However, our taxi rear ended a city bus. Oh shit. Jeez. The driver has jumped out and screaming at the bus driver. Now we're sitting in the back arguing whether we have to pay for our ride still and whether or not we should flee before the police arrive. Brothers, help us. And um, that's from traumatized taxi travelers in New York City. I'm assuming (laughs) 
the, the typing, gotta be a law on this the one. The typing of the question, I'm assuming, was therapeutic for you in that once you finished typing it, you're like, well, we certainly do have to stay here in the cab, don't we? We really don't have a lot of options here. I dare Scott, oh. we, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this one, gang. I'm almost 100% certain you are not the first people to be in a cab accident. There has to be precedent for this one, I think. Well, I don't here, know. The good news is, if you do run away, what's the cab driver going to do? Follow you in their cab? Don't rip off cab drivers. We should we should be explicitly clear that you shouldn't rip off cab drivers. It's it's a question of what do they owe you? They put they made you be in a crash. How um, long were you in the cab before that? Like were you almost to your destination? Then you need to stay and pay. <sighs> if it's like you just sat down in the cab, turned a corner, hit a buzz, move it along. Did you, did you just maybe ask the taxi driver who's having a very bad day? Oh yes. You oh. should probably ask them. You were a witness, though. You were a witness to the crime. I don't think you can flee because you witnessed it. It wasn't a crime as much as it was a New York whoopsie. <laughs> okay, you were a witness to the whoopsie. In a New York whoopsie. <laughs> Guys, if I ever make a fourth album, witness to the whoopsie is just about the best <laughs> name I can come up with. <laughs> Dang. It's... I was a witness to the whoopsie. Dang. Um... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, ask the cab driver or Google it. What do you do if you're, I, I'll fucking Google it for you here. Let me just do it. I don't want to get snide, but what do you do? You do, jeez, <laughs> type much? If you're, you're in a cab and it gets in a New York whoopsie. <laughs> Griffin, also search how to be on cash cab. Yeah. Is is it like a submission thing or do they just randomly pick people up? I mean, there's a whole website here called Justia, which may be Justin's website, but he mistyped it at the end and put an A in instead of N. Yeah. Um, and do you have to pay, though? To be on Cash Cab? <laughs> if you lose Cash Cab, do you have to pay when you get to your destination? Do they drop you off if you lose and you don't get to go to your destination? I've never watched Cash Cab. Oh, I think my Skype might have cut out. Can you guys not hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you, Trav. <laughs> Here's another question. Pay them. I just decided just, to pay just the pay, pay, pay the, the cabbie. Just look at the meter. Pay what's there. With pay a nice the cabbie. Yes. A while ago, I folded an. Oh, but wait, they don't have cash. They're gonna. They were planning on using a card. Use the fucking card reader. It probably didn't explode when we were into this bus. <laughs> that shouldn't look suspicious. A while ago, I folded an origami dragon for my math teacher. The teacher asked me if I was good at origami. I said, yeah, sort of. She then asked, can you fold books to make words? I, socially inept and wanting to exit the conversation as quickly as possible, said yes, which was a complete and total lie. She gave me an old math book to fold into her last name. I have no clue how to fold books. How can I do this? <laughs> Or maybe how can I escape this awful task I did not mean to accept? I haven't looked at the book for a week or two. I keep making up excuses, so I haven't started yet. <laughs> it's from a clever name pun involving books or something. I can't even be bothered to make up a name. Bad enough that you're agreeing to fold books into words. <laughs> Books already have words in them. That's right. Yeah, so you should just give her back the original book and say, like, yep, there you go. One word-filled book, hot and fresh, ready to order. I'm looking at... Full books. I'm looking at it now. It's like if you you fold a bunch of pages in a row in a way that then makes, like, a pattern up here. So you can, like... uh, you know, fold one page, and that's like the very left side of the J. And then it needs to be a long book if you're spelling out Jonathan Taylor Thomas, like a oh, long, 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 long book. Um, it's <clears throat> nice that your teacher said, oh, thank you for this present. Now let me give you a chore to do. Yeah. This present's lovely. Make me a bigger, better present. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at Etsy, and we're talking about this is a $40 product that you are giving giving to them for free. Um, yeah. Uh, I could do one where I just sort of 
sort of uh, roll the pages a little bit and then tuck it back into the spine and just do that and with all the pages and you give it back and the teacher's like, this doesn't say anything. And you say, yes, it does. It says, mmm, mmm, Because it looks like a bunch of M's, teach. Wait, could you just wait until you graduate and not worry about it anymore after that? That could be good. You could also get a Sharpie out and write Derek on the side of the book. Ooh, or find someone on Etsy and buy the book from them already or send it to them and say, hey, will you do this for me? And now you're the, like, middleman of origami. Why'd you lie so bad? <laughs> i tell you what's worth trying is to go to the teacher and say, I couldn't do it, and I thought I could, but your name's too hard, and it's got a lot of bad letters in it. For Or from an origami perspective, it's got a lot of bad letters in it. And I couldn't do it. And I tried, but I couldn't do it. And I'm sorry, but I couldn't do it. I decided instead to focus on my studies. Right. Because I'm a child. And then your teacher's like, my name is Joe, and it's just J-O, so... But the O is the hard the one. The O is a really toughie, because how There's do you get There's a lot of curves one? in there? Give me uh, angles all day long. Hey, why'd you lie so bad, though? This yeah. seems like a weird one. I get wanting to get out of the conversation, but in my experience, no is the much better ripcord for pretty much most things. Mm -hmm. If someone tries to improv you and you say no, end of improv, you're out of there. But if yeah. you say yes and, now you have to, you know, what are you going to say next about the grocery store? Here, Griffin, let's try it, okay? okay? Hey, Griffin, are you any good at origami? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> oh, it's pretty good. Can you fold books into words? No. <laughs> I hate you. You fail. You fail this class. Oh, no. You're okay. out of school now, and okay. you're off the football team. No, okay. Quarterback. All right, let me try. Converse the conversation's still over, though, isn't it? Trav, let me, yeah. let me try. Ask me, Trav. Okay. Hey, are you any good at origami? Hell yeah. I well don't curse. We're in school. <laughs> fuck yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Hey, Yo, hey, I heard that. This guy's Derek, so get to math. Is he fucking? Is origami Steve good at origami? Dumb fucking question. Think get about out. think about it with your fucking brain before you get fall. out of here, cursing Jerry. He, oh. Cursing Jerry's vaping everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to talk to Origami Steve. Oh shit, he's folding up my vape fog in the air. <laughs> Don't curse. I'm gonna send you to the principal's office. Yeah. Get out of here. Now I'm sorry, Origami Steve. Yeah. I know you're gonna do origami. Mm -hmm. Can you fold books? He's the fucking words? best in origami. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Cursing Jerry, I'll call your dad. <laughs> Okay. Can you fold books and I'll call your dad. <laughs> I'll call your dad. Oh, Get to lunch. Okay. It's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. Now, can you fold books into words? Only Bibles. <laughs> uh, you sit there in silence. See what the see what tough tough Miss Teacher wants to do then. See how much she'd love to see her name represented in the art of the falling page that she's willing to destroy God's beautiful, perfect word. Uh, let's end this uh, episode. Hell yeah. Yeah. This has been so much fun. Thank you all for hanging out with us. We love you very much. Um, you, uh, we had a really fun 2018 with you, and we hope that we're going to have a great year together, us and you. Um, if you are anywhere near New Orleans... The no the Nola, I believe. Mm -hmm. As um, I believe they call as it. As they call it. Or maybe just Nola. I don't actually know. Uh if you're anywhere near there or Birmingham, Alabama, we're gonna be headed your way. So please uh come see us. If you head to McElroy.family, uh you can find the tour section there and you can see the places that we are going to be. And that is going to be uh in uh Birmingham on February seventh. And then New Orleans on February 9th with the Adventure Zone and February 10th with the Bim Bam All Shows starting at 7 p.m. And uh, it will be very fun, and we hope that you will come 
uh, and join us because we're really looking forward to it. We've never been in that area. I've I've never visited either of those cities, so it's going to be a hoot and a half. Uh, also, even before that, here in uh, January, uh, you can come see Sawbones at Sketchfest, the California Academy of Sciences, uh, on January 17th. It's a big show with uh, us, and uh, Roderick's going to be there with Omnibus. And uh, you should know this, and <clears throat> John the Colton, Paul and Storm, and a lot of other cool folks. So um, you go to Sketchfest website, get tickets for that. Also, last thing, you can get uh, uh, remote attendance or in-person attendance, I guess, for uh, PodCon. That's going to be January 19th through the uh, 20th, and there's a lot of different uh, panels you can see and stuff like that. And you can get remote attendance if you go to the PodCon website, which is podcon.com. So go for it. And Justin mentioned earlier our website, McElroy.Family. Got a bunch of stuff on there. If you want to find out more about our shows or get the the newest merch, we have a new pin for January. It is a stylish pin that says unless on it. It's real slick. Um, yeah, that's all at McElroy.Family. And thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows there. Thanks to John Roderick and uh, The Long Winters for the use of our theme song, It's a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, it's very, very good, the song is, and the album, and the band, and you should go get the whole discography. Uh, so, y'all want the final? Yes. Uh, I was sent in by Megan. Thank you, Megan. It's from uh, an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. Muscly James is back on my screen. Thank you. Uh, Ooh, twofer he, for Muscly James. He's really curious, and he asks, how many rocks can you fit in your backpack? <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. If you're looking for a new comedy podcast, why not try the Beef and Dairy Network? It won Best Comedy at the British Podcast Awards in 2017 and 2018. Also, I know. There were no horses in this country until the the mid to late 60s. Specialist bovine arse vet. Both of his eyes are squid's eyes. Yogurt buffet. She was married to a bacon farmer who saved her life. Farm-raised snow leopard. Download it today. That's the Beef and Dairy Network podcast from MaximumFun.org. Also, maybe start at episode one, or weirdly, episode 36, which for some reason requires no knowledge of the rest of the show.